Hello guys, now in this video, let's discuss about the topic of menopause and hormone replacement therapy. So, let's start with the menopause. What exactly is mean by menopause guys? Menopause means complete cessation of menses for at least 12 months of period. In the other way, we can say 12 months of amenorrhea is regarded as menopause in a females. So, let's write down here 12 months of amenorrhea. Okay, from the last menstrual period should be considered as menopause in the female. Now, after this, let's discuss about diagnostic criteria of the menopause. So, how can you diagnose that the female went into menopause? See, it's the cessation of menstruation we have already discussed, 12 months of amenorrhea, followed by appearance of menopausal symptoms guys remember whenever the female enters into menopause she will have certain symptoms like heart flushes osteoporosis decreased libido okay so if she have these kind of symptoms that's also can be a diagnostic criteria for the menopause now vaginal cytology showing 100 zero, zero. what does it mean by guys this 100 is indicating more number of parabasal cells parabasal cells you already know that more number of superficial cells more number of superficial cells will be there during estrogenic predominance that is follicular phase of the menstrual cycle more number of intermediary cells will be there during progesterone dominance that is luteal phase of the cycle but remember whenever there is no hormone dominance that is during menopause during menopause estrogen levels and progesterone levels are damn low so during menopause if you see the vaginal cytology there will be more number of parabasal cells okay so that is the reason why here we can see more number of parabasal cells and zero intermediary cells and zero superficial cells Okay, now serum estradiol levels less than 20 picogram per ml. What does it mean by? Guys, the female have entered into the menopause. The ovarian failure is there. Ovaries are no longer having the ovarian follicles. Whenever there is no ovarian follicles, they are not synthesizing the estrogens. That is the reason why the estrogen levels are going down. So less than 20 picogram per ml of estradiol indicating that the female have entered into menopause. And also very, very important, the one important point which you should never ever miss is FSH levels. Guys, remember, normally, normally, ovarian follicles, granulosa cells, granulosa cells are making the estrogen. This estrogen will give negative feedback for FSH. So we all know that. Estrogen gives negative feedback for FSH. Now in our condition, menopause, there is ovarian failure. No follicles are there. There is no estrogen. So whenever there is no estrogen, there is no negative feedback for FSH. So what happens? The FSH levels will be super high in the blood. So in a menopausal female, the levels of FSH mainly will be more than 40 international units per ml okay so greater than 40 milli international units per ml of serum fsh is a definitive criteria for the menopause having said that let's continue see in this slide we are seeing the pathophysiology of the menopause what exactly happening in the menopause guys remember in the menopause there is ovarian failure Ovarian failure means decrease in the number of ovarian follicles. Okay. Now, whenever there are no follicles, there is an ovulation. If she is not ovulating, she will be definitely infertile. She cannot be a pregnant. Now, an ovulation means there is no corpus luteum formation. Whenever there is no corpus luteum, there is no progesterone. Okay. So, no menses amenorrhea. Okay. Now, Having said that, guys, remember, again, let's come with the next part of the story. See, please concentrate here now. 
whenever there are no ovarian follicles the estrogen synthesis from the ovaries is also decreased so whenever there is no estrogen synthesis we already knew that the vaginal epithelium the vaginal flora the vaginal secretions all of them are under the control of estrogen so whenever there is no estrogen the vaginal epithelium will undergo atrophy so what happen there will be atrophic vaginitis so a female during menopause will have senile or atrophic vaginitis senile means she is becoming old so there is atrophic vaginitis which will be very painful after that now as there is no estradiol production from the ovary there will be osteoclast activation leading to osteoporosis guys this is very important normally in a female her bone osteoclasts are kept inhibited by estrogens please remember estrogens okay will negatively inhibit osteoclasts so osteoclast function is checked during menopause whenever there is a decrease amount of estrogens what happens the osteoclasts are activated now they are more aggressively doing the bone resorption so whenever there is too much amount of bone resorption what happens that will cause porous bones leading to osteoporosis now remember whenever there is no estrogen and progesterone what happened to fshlh guys the fshlh values will be super high so such high levels of lh especially will cause vasomotor symptoms in this female vasomotor symptoms like hot flushes she will be experiencing hot flushes we will be discussing in detail in a minute now guys remember her ovaries are not functional as her ovaries are not functional we already know the theca interna cells theca interna cells produce androgens and those androgens are aromatized in the granulosa cells with the help of enzyme aromatase into androgens uh, sorry into estrogens so as the ovaries are non functional androgen production is also reduced we all know that the androgens are the ones responsible for the sexual activity even in the females as the androgen levels are less there will be decrease in libido now at the end of the slide very very important point you have to remember that please concentrate here as the negative feedback on fsh is lost what happens there is increase fsh production greater than 40 international units will be there you should have at least a two occasions in a one month so two occasions more than 40 international units per ml is an indicator of menopause okay high levels of fsh now see this high levels of fsh in this post menopausal women these high levels of fsh are getting excreted in the urine so in the urine of the post menopausal women there is a too much amount of fsh okay so in the urine there is too much amount of fsh now this fsh is extracted and this fsh can be used for ovulation induction in the females who have anovulation so this fsh can be used medically so this fsh extraction and used for the medical purposes this extracted fsh is known as human menopausal gonadotropin so what is meant by human menopausal gonadotropin guys human menopausal gonadotropin is nothing but the fsh which is extracted from the urine of post menopausal women okay having said that let's go with the symptoms of the menopause first symptom and the most classical symptom is the vasomotor symptom vasomotor symptom means hot flushes okay these are the most common and hallmark symptoms and this symptoms like you know, what does it actually mean by hot flushes hot flushes means sweating flushing palpitations anxiety okay suddenly the female will experience all of them how many times she will experience almost she will experience 5 to 10 times even 15 times these episodes are very transient and they will last for 1 to 3 minutes 
okay now these heart flushes they are due to estrogen withdrawal and lh surge there is no estrogen so that there is no negative feedback on fsh and lh so that there is too much amount of lh especially because of this lh the female will experience these kind of symptoms heart flushes okay now how to treat them these symptoms are mainly because of no estrogen so simply give estrogen and progesterone okay so estrogen therapy can be given see when usually please remember guys usually you should never give estrogen alone you should always give estrogen along with the progesterone why why because if you are only giving estrogen 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 that will cause endometrial proliferation endometrial hyperplasia that can cause endometrial cancer so you should never give estrogen alone you have to give cyclical estrogen along with progesterone so progesterone with the droil will cause menstruation so that there won't be any problem so the estrogenic action will be counteracted by the progesterone and progesterone with droil now so you can use estrogen alone only in one place where wherever the uterus is removed if the uterus is not there then in those conditions you can use estrogen alone the uterus is intact means if the uterus is intact means you have to use estrogen along with progesterone okay along with that if the female is not suitable for taking estrogens for example uh, there are a lot of places where you are not supposed to give estrogens for example if she is having deep venous thrombosis okay in those conditions you are not supposed to give estrogens why because estrogens are thrombogenic agents so wherever estrogen is not suitable in those conditions you can give progesterone why because progesterone will give negative feedback for lh so lh levels comes down so her tree uh, so her symptoms will be uh, treated now along with this you can use a tibolon a kind of drugs which are steer okay selective estrogen activity regulators okay these are activity regulators tibolon see these are all hormonal therapy which are main important but other than hormonal therapy for treating these heart flushes you can also use drugs like clonidine which is an antihypertensive drug a dopamine a antagonists like valproate and a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors like paroxetine and fluoxetine isoflavanones uh, 100 mg per day and soy products and vitamin e this is very important vitamin e can be used for treating heart flushes yes soy products yes ssri like fluoxetine paroxetine yes clonidine so these drugs which are non hormonal drugs can be used for treating the heart flushes now after heart flushes what else problems are there with this female the other problems can be osteoporosis because of no estrogen osteoclasts are activated these osteoclasts are resorbing the bone okay they are causing bone resorption now in this condition how to treat guys the main culprit here is the osteoclast so what we have to do just kill the osteoclast kill it how we can kill it by inducing apoptosis of the osteoclast by inhibiting the maturation of the osteoclast this is achieved by bisphosphonates guys bisphosphonates are first line drugs for the treatment of osteoporosis here this bisphosphonates will cause apoptosis of the osteoclasts and even this bisphosphonates inhibits interleukin 6 see interleukin 6 is necessary for the maturation of the osteoclast so this bisphosphonates inhibit interleukin 6 so the maturation of osteoclast is not there this is one hand and even this bisphosphonate group of drugs will directly cause apoptosis of the osteoclast so whenever there is no osteoclast the bone resorption is decreased so that there won't be any brittle bones okay now what are the examples guys the examples of the bisphosphonates are alendronate zolendronate pamidronate these are the dronate group of drugs okay now the main important side effects of this bisphosphonates is esophagitis esophageal irritation and osteonecrosis of the jaw okay so these side effects are important esophagitis is very very important okay why because even take while we taking this drug it causes irritation of the esophagus okay now the second drug which we can use here is reloxifene 
guys reloxifene is a serum which means selective estrogen receptor modulators what does i mean by guys this reloxifene is working as estrogens in one place and acting as anti estrogens in other place for example here main problem is at the bone level see this reloxifene is acting as estrogens at the level of bones it's acting as estrogen at the level of bones so what happens is it good or not yes definitely it's a good why because at bones as it's acting as a estrogen it inhibits osteoclast so bone resorption is inhibited so osteoporosis can be treated okay so remember it exhibits estrogen like action on bones and in other places like a breast and endometrium it can act as antagonistic action okay now guys uh, the side effects of this reloxifene is hot flushes and retinopathy and venous thrombosis the side effects are important and this reloxifene as it's acting against estrogen as it's acting as a anti estrogen at the level of endometrium it won't cause endometrial cancer usually estrogens will cause the endometrial cancer more amount of estrogens hyper estrogenic states can lead to endometrial cancer or aggravates the endometrial cancer now this reloxifene at the level of endometrium it's not acting as an estrogen so it further do not increases the risk of endometrial cancer that's the point which should be noted and drugs like teriparatide can be used what is teriparatide guys this teriparatide is a recombinant parathyroid hormone teriparatide is nothing but recombinant pdh what does i mean by usually parathyroid hormone increases the blood levels of calcium by bone resorption remember parathyroid hormone increases the levels of blood calcium by bone resorption but i am giving teriparatide for treating osteoporosis how this works remember yes teriparatide is an analog of parathyroid hormone but you have to use this teriparatide in pulsatile doses because if you use this teriparatide in pulsatile doses that will help okay in a bone formation okay see parathyroid hormone in continuous high levels will cause bone resorption but the same parathyroid hormone in pulsatile doses will help in bone formation so we have to use this teriparatide very carefully we have to use it in pulsatile doses okay now we can also use a drug known as denosumab in the name itself it's very clear it's a mab monoclonal antibody see it's a monoclonal antibody it inhibits rank ligand guys remember if this is the osteoclast on the osteoclast there is a receptor known as rank receptor see this rank receptor is activated by rank ligand so whenever this rank ligand binds to the rank receptor see this osteoclasts are activated and this osteoclasts will do bone resorption but our drug denosumab what it will do this denosumab will inhibit this rank ligand so rank receptors are not activated so osteoclasts are not activated so there is no bone resorption so whenever there is no bone resorption that can treat osteoporosis okay and last and final drug is strontium renalate guys this is the one important drug so far see remember so far we have seen the therapeutic agents which are either inhibiting the osteoclasts or either in or either stimulating the osteoblast but this is the one drug strontium renalate which have both the actions it have two hands with one hand it inhibits osteoclast with the other hand it stimulates osteoblast so it is promoting the bone formation or bone growth as well as it inhibits the bone resorption so if someone asks you what is the one drug which does the both it is strontium renalate see it inhibits the bone resorption as well as stimulates the bone 
formation so these are the different group of drugs which can be used for treating the osteoporosis other than this we can use a calcium supplements also for treating the osteoporosis but these are some important drugs which should be kept in mind now after this let's discuss about hormone replacement therapy guys we have treated the vasomotor symptoms with hormonal non hormonal drugs we have treated the osteoporosis what else we can treat we can treat the atrophic vaginitis or senile vaginitis means the vaginal epithelium is undergoing the atrophy how we can treat that that can be treated by giving local or topical estrogen creams okay so this atrophic vaginitis can be treated with the estrogen creams topical estrogen applications okay well and good but now let's come to the topic of hormone replacement therapy hrt means what in a post menopausal female or just in a menopausal female the hormone levels are damn low so because of that lots and lots of problems are there like heart flushes osteoporosis decreased libido uh, atrophic vaginitis so where we can use this hormone replacement therapy see hormone replacement therapy is used in menopausal women who are having the symptoms of heart flushes to relieve these heart flushes you can use hrt so to prevent this osteoporosis you can use hrt or to maintain a quality of life for example the a sexual life of these post menopausal women to make them again uh, more sex oriented okay why because of a decrease androgens and because of atrophic vaginitis their sexual life is hampered to make them to make their sexual life again normal we can use this hormone replacement therapy okay now let's discuss hormone replacement therapy what are the potential benefits and harms guys a uh, potential benefits and harms of hrt this is very very important see if you are doing hormone replacement therapy it's okay well and good there are benefits but there are also harms why you are doing something totally against the nature nature decrease the hormones after the menopause you are doing something totally against the nature so there are some benefits but as you are doing something totally against the nature there are also certain risks and harms what are they see the fractures because of osteoporosis are treated like you know wrist fracture and the symptoms of menopause like heart flushes hip fracture all are these benefits okay they are all treated but as you are giving more amount of estrogens these estrogens can cause lot of problems for example see these estrogens are thromboembolic agents estrogenic or estrogens are thrombogenic agents so they can cause dvt even use of this estrogen and progesterone or using of estrogen alone can cause dementia estrogen is a stimulant for endometrium so if you are taking estrogen 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 that estrogen can act on the endometrium that cause endometrial hyperplasia leading to endometrial cancer these are the risks see definitive risk sir most of the females who are on the hrt they have developed the stroke because of the thromboembolic events they have developed cholecystitis okay a coronary heart disease and ovarian cancer breast cancer for ovaries and breasts estrogen are the stimulants okay so as we are taking high amounts of estrogens these estrogens can cause this a uh, risk very very important they will ask him now so what are the conditions where hormone replacement therapy is absolutely contraindicated where you are not supposed to give this hormone replacement therapy see the mnemonic is a b c d where a for acute liver disease or current gallbladder disease see estrogens are getting metabolized in the liver if there is some problem with the liver of the female if you are giving estrogens those estrogens cannot be metabolized so if you are giving estrogens they will stay in the body for longer time and that will be so detrimental okay so if the female is having acute liver disease no estrogens or no hormone replacement therapy okay there is undiagnosed vaginal bleeding see this undiagnosed vaginal bleeding can be because of endometrial cancer or uterine cancer 
See, if she is having undiagnosed uterine cancer, you are giving estrogens that will be very, very bad. So, in undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, no HRT. Okay, see, if she is having breast cancer or uterine cancer, okay, diagnosis is there. Breast cancer or uterine cancer, no estrogens. Okay, and if the patient is having any history of DVT, okay, deep vein thrombosis, no HRT. Why? Because estrogens are thrombogenic. She is in the her in her history. She is already having the DVT. So at any time she can again develop this DVT. Okay. So these are the conditions where HRT is absolutely contraindicated. Okay, guys. I hope uh, the class is helpful. Thank you.